After two and a half years of denying its very existence, North Korea seems not only to have accepted the arrival of the pandemic, but that it's now everywhere. The outbreak dominates extended coverage on state-run media, with people being encouraged to adopt good hygiene, exercise and homegrown remedies, with the emphasis on living with the virus rather than isolating from it. The malignant virus spreads very quickly, but on the other hand, the danger of the pathogen is low. It can be completely destroyed. Case studies of families who have apparently contracted the virus and then recovered have been widely aired. We all got sick, this father says, then adding they all got better within a couple of days. The message seems to be, don't panic. It's very different from the confident face that North Korea has shown to the world in public parades and gatherings in recent months, which could prove to have been major super-spreader events. Leader Kim Jong-un has criticized his officials and ordered pharmacies to provide more medicines. Given most people experience mild symptoms from the Omicron variant, it's been established that cold and flu remedies can help. But that's on top of comprehensive vaccination campaigns. And so far, North Korea has resisted all international offers of vaccines, including from South Korea. This mild type of COVID-19 spreading through a completely unprotected population seems to be uncharted territory, with neighboring health officials looking on with concern. We don't know what the consequences of this Omicron variant will be when it spreads to a large number of people who have never been in contact with COVID-19. There are enough reasons to pay attention to this with interest. Adding to North Korea's problems is widespread malnutrition from food shortages, an economy racked by years of sanctions and a weak medical system. Many observers believe it can't afford a hard lockdown like other countries and has no choice but to tough it out. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Seoul.